Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mock. Welcome to Foot Off Eagles Now. It is the weekend. It is mailbag time, and we're going to jump into our subscriber-only mailbag questions here in just one second. First, though, we want you guys to be part of next week's mailbag video, which will be, I guess, the end of week three of training camp, which is crazy. It goes by really, really fast, and by this time next week, we'll also have a preseason game to react to as well. So that's coming up, again, about a little less than a week from today. So be a part of next week's mailbag video. Hashtag Eagles in the comments section uh, to be a part of that one. Must be a subscriber, though. So get your questions in on this video to be a part of next week's video. All right, we're going to jump into your guys' mailbag questions as week two of training camp is coming to an end. Upon filming this video early in the AM, there's no practice today. So depending on when you watch this, they might be practicing. But the day that I'm filming this, they're not practicing. They get a full rest day off, which is good news for uh, all involved, but especially those older veterans. We'll start with the first question. Tariq Shell says, are Rager, Whiteside, and Ward Jr. the first ones cut when it comes to trim the roster down to the final 53-man roster? No, and a little uh, uh, asterisk here. Whiteside's not on the wide receiver depth chart. He's on the tight end depth chart. Remember, he swapped over uh, and has not done much. So I think he's going to be cut, just not from the wide receiver uh, room. I, I think there are other guys that are going to be let go ahead of Rager and Ward Jr. I think I think Rager for sure makes the roster or is traded, as we talked about. Uh, and I think Ward is right there on the bubble. I think maybe he makes it, maybe he doesn't. This is a massive, massive preseason for the wide receiver depth chart room. It kind of always is. The problem is, as you look at the wide receiver depth chart, not a lot of spots. I mean, they're not a lot of roster. But there's four for sure players who are locked in. I think that that's obviously Pascal, Watkins, Smith, and A.J. Brown. I think those are for sure four. We'll throw in Rager to make it five, and they're only going to keep, what, six, maybe seven, and then some practice squad guys? So, you know, names like Wheatful and Lenore and Kane, uh, Hightower, those guys are the ones that are going to be cut and let go first before a name uh, like Ward or Rager. Uh, Britton Covey is very interesting right now, and there have been so, a little bit of buzz around him with the return specialist abilities and just being a slot wide wide receiver, some analysts out there at training camp who said he runs some crisp routes. Is he going to make the roster, though? That's going to be tough. Maybe a practice squad guy. And then Devin Allen. I still have no idea what Devin Allen is going to do or be. We know he's fast. We know that he jumps the gun sometimes in his 110-meter hurdle races. If you saw that, you know you know what I'm talking about. But can he play wide receiver, right? Can he be a return man? I have no idea. Again, preseason is going to be a real chance for these guys to go ahead and shine. You get four catches for you know 54 yards and a touchdown. That's massive in a pre season game versus, you know, two targets, two drops, and no yards. You I mean, well on the way uh, to being let go. But I do think that Rager and Ward, I think Rager makes the roster unless he's traded, as I said. I think Ward is, is probably the first guy in versus last or first guy out, but he's right there on the bubble. But time will tell, as we know here uh, on the channel. Okay, add Ray Penn comment down below. Let's get this uh, show started. Name a surprise wide receiver who will make the roster, who you think will for sure make the roster. Let me know down below in the comment section right now. Okay, next question comes from Peter Kalos, who says, I've heard Jalen Hurts has continued to struggle, just looks consistently off. When does this start uh, to be something we worry about? And how has Minshew looked thus far? Hashtag Eagles. So I'll push back a little bit here. You guys know that I'm a Jalen Hurts apologist, although I've said on the show he has been up and down. But he's really had good and bad moments. He hasn't been all bad. It's not like they're, they're mashing the panic button right now in Philadelphia because he just looks so terrible at practice. He's had some, you know, not so great days. He's had some pretty good days. He's had some not so great throws and some really good throws. And what's the analogy we talk about on the show every single day at training camp? The roller coaster, up and down, right? And a lot of the guys who were there covering it for various media outlets, they don't know the the full story. Are they supposed to? Is he supposed to be targeting this receiver on this route, even if it is covered? Therefore, you know, throwing the ball a little bit over him? Uh, we, we don't know, right? This is the stuff that happens um, at training camp. And so I'll push back a little bit and say he's not been too bad. Really, the, the panic button starts when the regular season games start being lost. That's when you would actually start panicking about Jalen Hurts. Even if the first preseason game he struggles, second preseason game he struggles a little bit, third preseason game, you know, I'm not going to worry too much. Will I at least be acknowledgement of it? Sure. But we talk about actually being worried. You got to start 0-4, right? You got to be 1-5. You got to be 2-6. and That's when you're actually going to start to worry about Jalen Hurts. In terms of Gardner Minshew, I have heard he's not been spectacular, but really the entire quarterback room is not really flashed. Going back to Reed Sinat and uh, Reed Sinat, excuse me, and, and then, of course, Carson Strong mentioned him in a video the other day. He's been very unimpressive. And so the entire quarterback room has not been that great. 
But as we'll see in a question here in just one second, they're going against a top five defense in the National Football League, and the defense wins early in training camp. And so I'm expecting the offense to start to kind of figure things out maybe next week at training camp, and maybe the Hurts reports, you know, the run game reports, the receiver reports start to kind of trend upwards a little bit. But let's not panic. Let me just emphasize that. We are nowhere near panicking right now. Week one and a half, I guess, maybe week two of training camp. Let's all calm down just a little bit. Now, I do understand that you're on Twitter, and so Twitter is going to say everything bad about Jalen Hurts that's physically possible. And so I'm going to ask you guys this. You're hearing more good news or bad news about Jalen Hurts? I think most people are hearing more bad news, although, trust me, the good news is out there. I found it. It is very much out there. I'm not pulling it out of my butt. Uh, they've heard more good news type G. have heard more bad news type B down below. Way down there, if you guys hate the Dallas Cowboys, make sure you guys are subscribed. And if you are a subscriber, give me an F Dallas down below in the comments section. Rocking the Eagles gear today because you know how much we hate the Dallas Cowboys on Philadelphia Eagles now. So if you hate them, you should subscribe to the channel because uh, they're just the worst. They're so annoying. Have you seen the videos of uh, Trayvon Diggs getting burned at training camp? I know that we talk about the roller coaster, but a lot of videos coming out of Cowboy training camp of Trayvon, Trayvon Diggs getting torched by some undrafted free agent wide receiver. And it's going to be fun when this receiving court goes up against Dallas. A little, uh, you know, side rant there. I'll get off my soap box but Dallas overrated this year if you agree subscribe down below okay Bobby Graham 22 says if Hurts plays well this year which I think he will which positions do you think will target in next year's draft wow a draft question in August not gotten one of those in a while I you guys know I love the draft though so I just can't pass on this question it's too fun I thought about this and while the team is stacked they still will have positions of need if Hurts plays well right assuming you spend two first round draft picks on non-quarterback players here are my top four and I think these are in order cornerback one because I don't think that Darius Slay and James Bradbury will be the, the duo of the future. Not because they're going to be bad, but because Bradbury's on a one-year deal. He's probably going to ball out and want even more money. And Slay is getting old. So, right, he can play two or three more years, but eventually you need his replacement. Is McPherson that on the roster? I don't know. I think cornerback this year, always defensive end or defensive line. I mean, that is a Howie Roseman staple. It's impossible to think they won't take one. Cox is going to retire. I know you have Jordan Davis. Brandon Graham is getting a little bit older. Hassan Reddick is no spring chicken. I mean, he's still technically young, but he's not like, you know, eight years left in the league young. So I can see defensive end. Safety for sure, unless Epps pops here, but I don't think Anthony Harris stays for another season. And so you got to find the replacement there. And then we'll go running back. And that's more so specifically if Miles Sanders is not re-signed. If he's re-signed, no worries. You don't need a running back. If he's not re-signed, let's go get one. There'll be plenty in college football because it's the most... Ben I mean, it's, it's, it's the one position in college football that there's like a thousand good ones out there and you could take one in the sixth round and they can still turn out to be pretty decent. Quickly on the cornerback... Uh, 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 let's just, just go for the cornerback depth chart here briefly. Again, I don't want to say Bradbury uh, and Slay are bad or they're too old or whatever. I just think that you need the contingency plans in there, especially if Bradbury doesn't come out. There's one Eagle beat writer, I forget who it was, who says Bradbury's been the best player at the entire Eagles training camp. So that's a little, little hype there, a little excitement. But behind them, you know, where's Zach McPherson on this list? And then behind that, it's like, what do you really have in terms of starting caliber cornerbacks? And so I see, see cornerback being a real uh, option early in the NFL draft. Um, okay, we'll get to more questions in just one second. First, Devontae Smith jersey still available. You guys are always asking me on my Twitter account, you know, what's the length of the jerseys? Where are they at right now? Do they have my size? I, I, I don't know if they have your size. Check, right? Here's the link. It's on your screen and down below in the descri description box right now. Chatsports.com forward slash Devontae is the link that you need because, of course, Devontae Smith. You get the black, you get the green, you get the white. Pick these up right now. Go down below. Uh, you will not be disappointed in the authentic, I mean, it's the NFL real Nike stuff, not the overseas stuff, authentic Eagle uh, jersey. I have one hanging behind you, as I always say, my Devontae Smith jersey. So pick one up uh, and look just like me. Okay, Silly Willie says, I'm a little worried, but it's just preseason jitters. But you have to put in perspective, if Bradbury has a comeback season, the Birds have two number ones at corner and a damn good nickel with Epps, who's getting good praise. It will be great for Hurts because every practice will be against a possible top five defense versus the defense last year, which wasn't great, end quote. I agree. I mentioned this earlier. Now we can dive deeper into it. Hertz has a great defense to go against. This defense is throwing everything they can at Hertz early on in practice. Jonathan Gannon has mentioned that. Eagles offensive quarter Shane Steichen has mentioned that. They are getting a lot of good looks for this young corner, uh, uh, excuse me, quarterback. And that's going to hopefully transition the National Football League in terms of Week 1, Week 2, and beyond. And so this defense is stacked. It is going to dominate. All reports are saying the Eagle D-line is really looking good despite the fact they're going against the number best offensive line in the National Football League. Opposing offenses are going to hate playing Philadelphia because this is a top three defense. I've said it since March. I mean, literally, this is a stacked, stacked defense. If you guys agree, drop a like. Drop a like if you guys agree the defense is going to dominate. They're going to be really, really good. 
Okay, final question, Big Dog in 1891. How much of a joke do you think it is regarding the whole Watson situation for him to only be suspended six games comparison to Ridley being suspended for the entire year when the Watson incident was so much worse? It is dumb. It is dumb. But, you know, the NFL has taken over and appealed the, uh, whatever the ruling was, the six-game rule by that independent uh, investigator, judge, whatever Sue Robinson was. So the NFL will extend the Watson ruling. They'll probably give him a year, eight or nine games. It's their chance to kind of get that image back. So I'm not worried about that. I'll just spin this in the Eagle fashion. Thank goodness the Eagles did not trade multiple first-round draft picks for Deshaun Watson. What a nightmare. And then give him a massive contract? Nightmare. We would be, oh my gosh, we'd be pulling our hair out. And plus, thank goodness you didn't trade for Calvin Ridley because you wouldn't have him for a full year. Ridley did get screwed. Like, let's just be real. He did. But I do think the NFL is going to change uh, the Watson ruling and make it a lot longer, which will help save face based on all the other previous rulings that have been terrible by the league and the commissioner. All right, there you go. All time we have for a day on our Eagles weekend mailbag video. Hope you guys... Have a great and safe weekend. Hashtag Eagles in the comments section to be a part of uh, next week's mailbag video. As we said, must be a subscriber. Turn on the notification bell as well. That way you're notified when we drop the latest stuff. We're previewing the preseason next week. Week one, we're going to break it all down before and after. It's going to be a lot of fun, so subscribe for that. And follow me on Twitter, at Real Thomas Mott, my official Twitter account where I can post uh, my own thoughts on the Eagles. I mean, it's my unedited stuff. It's controlled by me. It's fantastic. So if you guys want to follow me there, give me a follow on Twitter. For Phil Eagles now, Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.